Hello and welcome to Tari Bio Speaks, the live series podcast. Today, I have a special guest with me. On this podcast, we discuss contemporary issues and we feature distinguished personalities who have carved the niche for themselves despite challenges they face all through their lives. And these people have come out looking better and encouraging others who are going through similar circumstances. My guest with me today on the show, which is the Maiden Edition, is one of such persons who has gone through so many challenges. Ordinarily, some people would have given up, but he said no when no was necessary. And his parents, of course, gave him the support he needed. Please join me in welcoming Barista Isinkuma Alagwa. You're welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, it's nice How to old are you? I'm 31. You're 31 years old. Yes. All right. So, um, from what I gathered, after your birth, the doctors, because you weren't crying, they decided to shake you and then the shaking went on or it was too vigorous yeah. and so you started bleeding. Um, they call it intracranial bleeding and so as a result you developed cerebral palsy. Yeah. So how was it growing up with a condition? Growing up with a condition, I believe me, it was easy. Okay. But, uh, Thanks to the Almighty God Himself and uh, my parents, as well as the support of family members, uh, we have skilled through for the past 31 years, and I just thank God for His blessing. Okay. So, how was it going to school? Because, of course, you you must have gone through primary, secondary, and studied law in the university before proceeding to law school. How was it? Well, going to school, my primary school days were actually jovial because I had the support of uh, my classmates who would uh, surround me and assist me with anything I needed. Uh, so an example would be that. Uh, they would come around me and uh, stay with me when sh the school had shut down for the day. Or most times, uh, that, that would be until my people came to get me. Or most times, they would uh, come to, they would take me home themselves. Okay. That, they would carry my things. and To so your home? Yeah, okay. my home. And then someone would lift me and then they, they would bring me home. So basically, life in primary school was actually uh, what, what were to use? Not okay, easy. Let me use the term easy. In comparison to the other. In comparison to the others. Let me use the term easy. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't as easy in secondary school? No, 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 no. Although I did have some good friends in secondary school, but uh, they were limited in that. Okay. So. Do you have any friends from primary and secondary that you still keep in touch with? Not much, no. Not at the moment. But I hope to, do, I, I hope to reconnect with To them. reconnect with some of them. Okay, so how was university? University, well, for the first year it was relatively easy because my class was downstairs. Okay. It was um, when we went to my fifth year, which was uh, 500 level. That was uh, the challenging part because I had to be taken upstairs. Okay. And most times it was between me and my dad. Uh, who had to do the heavy lifting? He will lift you upstairs. Uh, although in primary, let me not forget to mention that uh, through primary and uh, secondary school, in addition to my mom, he, he did most of the heavy lifting. So he had to carry me um, up the stairs. And believe me, it wasn't uh, a fun experience. Yeah. There was always the 
fear that there was no danger of somebody sleeping here and there but we thank God for his grace there's nothing God's grace okay so before we get to law school from primary secondary to university did you experience any sort of discrimination or bullying I wouldn't say I was bullied no no bullying no bullying at all no bullying at all my God's grace there was no, there was no such thing I, but that doesn't mean I didn't have, I didn't have my skills with other students, but no bullying at all. Okay. So now let's get to law school. How was law school? Uh, law school, well, no. difficult because I didn't start any. Okay. Uh, in the first period, when my name first came out, I was already nine months late. So. Oh, nine, sorry, let me correct that. Mm. I was already nine weeks late. Okay. Um, so, and that affected my... Um, Your performance. My performance. And my ability to study because, the, because of the workload and all that. Because you were coming from a point of disadvantage, nine yeah. weeks behind your colleagues, yeah. and most of them didn't have the challenge you have. No, no. Okay, so that means you didn't make the first time you went to law school. No, I didn't make it. Yeah, I did not make it. So, uh, were you tempted to give up when you didn't make the first one? Yes, I was. I was indeed. Because uh, I told myself when I saw that thing, I, I said, no, this thing is too hectic. I said, no, I'm not going back. But thanks to my parents, my family members, my pastors, they were impressed on me that I must go back by any means necessary. So I went back in 2021 and by, by his grace we succeeded and we are here now. Okay. So I, while speaking with you earlier, you said something about some public buildings not being disability friendly can you cite some examples you witnessed yes um such as the supreme court okay. in uh, that situation there is there was no ramp at all and uh, four men or everybody men had to lift me up to go inside my bench as well okay so that that uh, like other experiences or let me just admit this here and now i'm afraid of heights uh, so <laughs> that, that experience was not fun where four people were lifting you up to, mm -hmm. into the building yes okay so what do you have to say for those who have children who might have some form of disability not necessarily cerebral palsy what, what do you have to say to such parents and the children themselves who might be watching this? Uh, what do I have to say to parents? Actually, it's... I'll tell you this and I keep saying it and I'll say it tomorrow. This disability is not a curse. So, do not... For parents, teachers, uh, the government, for those who will be listening, do not neglect these children because most of them are uh, brilliant. Okay. And they may be disabled, but they tend to take care of that disability by learning quickly mentally. Okay. Just like I did. Okay. So uh, the government should support. Uh, these families as much as they can because we know that the economy is not easy okay so when it came to learning what were the challenges you had basically my dexterity okay that was what i had because uh, i couldn't write fast um i had to borrow notes to come home and copy and i had to return the next day but over time, I've um, learned to rise above that. 
Would you say that was part of the reason why you didn't make law school the first time? Yes, 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 yes. Because you, your writing was slow. Yes, yes. That, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the major reasons. Okay, so what did you do differently the second time around that made you skill through? Uh, aside from the prayer aspect and all that, I had someone who literally left what he was doing to follow me to Abuja. Okay. To and he became my tutor. Okay. Uh, teaching me to answer questions quickly. Okay. Answer. So the problem you had was answering quickly, not that you didn't know the answer. I knew the answers, but answering quickly. Answering quickly within the the allotted time. Time limit because most times questions are a hundred questions will be for about let me say one hour or so. So, uh, juggling because juggling that juggling your time is uh, a very big challenge when you're writing in law school exam. Okay. So you have to manage your time a lot. You know, that that was a major issue for me. So during your time in law school, the first and the second time, do you know anyone who? Was he able to finish and dropped out completely? Uh, I wouldn't know, no. But uh, we had um, stories of people who dropped out. Who, who even in the hall back there, there are people who actually collapsed because um, because of the strain of this uh, exam. But you were able to pull through. <laughs> yes, like I said, I had the back of the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> as well as the host of angels behind me. So, uh, of course, I had uh, strength because the strength was not my own, of course. Yeah. Uh, if I, not a, a normal man, because I even heard some people discussing of how they pulled all nighters and all that. But for me, in my God's case, I never had to do that. I took my time and um, just the support of family. Mostly. Okay. My mom was even ready to bring in the <laughs> special needs bill. So <laughs> to bring in the special needs bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but uh, as God would have it, we didn't uh, need that because I always finish my questions on time. On time. Okay. So. Basically, what I would like to know before we leave is the advocacy part. I know you have been involved in advocacy for a couple of years now. So how yes. has it been advocating uh, for the those living with disability? Advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. That one will start with my mom. Okay. Because... Um, we met the English ones when we were in Abuja for the first time in 2020. Immediately they saw me, they said, I must be a part. It was more an ambassador I of must, the English ones. I must ones. become the face <laughs> of them. So we joined them for their work in 2020. It was a success. And I must admit, I was nervous. I had never done such a thing like that. So, okay, what do you think about the labor market? Is it disability friendly? No, it's not. It is not. There, there are no slots for disabled people. So, In or even if there are, it's minimum. At best, it's minimum. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not fifty-fifty. So you think government and organizations should have slot for those living with disability yes. or employment? Yes, because for disabled people, for, the, for both the disabled people and the normal people, it depends on your capability. Yeah. Uh, because a disabled man today can be as capable as an able-bodied man. Yeah. All it, all, all it takes is the mind, it's your mind. The mind is the so a disabled person should always train his mind. Okay. 
So the disabled person should always train its mind. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Barrister Isinkuma Alagwa. I've had you here for some minutes. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, um, for those of you who might have more questions for Barrister Isinkuma Alagwa, he's on Facebook. So you can follow him on Facebook. I don't know if you're on professional mode. But for anyone who would like to get in touch with me, you can send an email to nectalscrystals at gmail.com or you send me a DM and you can get in touch with him. We appreciate you all for watching the Taribio Speaks live series podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.